All right, Kim students, this unit is gas laws. You will need your blue note packet and something to write with. All right, the first thing we're going to start with is the kinetic theory of gases. This theory assumes all of the following statements about gas behavior. The first one, gas particles do not attract or repel each other. This is because they are very spread out. It's easy to compress them because of this. Now, number two is gas particles are much smaller than the distance between them. This means that almost all of the volume of a gas is empty space. This is why they have low densities and again, why we can compress them easily. Number three, gas particles are always in constant random motion. They're always moving and there's no predictability involved. Number three, gas particles are always in constant random motion. Number four, no kinetic energy is lost when gas particles collide with each other or the sides of their container. These collisions are called elastic. That means they bounce off the walls just like a rubber ball would bounce off of the floor. They leave with the same amount of energy as they arrived with. Number five, all gases have the same average kinetic energy at a given temperature. As temperatures increase, kinetic energy also increases. That is a direct relationship, so keep that in mind. All right, pressure is defined as force per unit area. We have the formula for that right here. Now, why does it hurt more if a woman steps on your foot with a high heel compared to a flat shoe? Now, when a high heel, the, her entire mass is focused mostly onto the heel of the shoe. So the force per area, the area will be smaller but the force will be the same as it would be for the flat shoe. On the flat shoe, it's spread out over more area, it won't hurt as bad. Along the same lines, why are snowshoes effective? If you increase the surface area of your foot, you're, you're distributing your mass across the top of the snow so you won't sink in. Now, the pressure of a gas results from the force created by moving particles as they collide with the walls of the container. If you increase the pressure, you increase the force uh, on the, being exerted on your container. Okay, that brings us to atmospheric pressure. The Earth is surrounded by an atmosphere that extends for hundreds of kilometers into space. Now, this blanket of air is pushing down on us at all times. At sea level, the pressure is equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch, or we'll refer to from now on as PSI. This pressure is measured with a tool called a barometer. The barometer was invented by Evangelista Torricelli uh, in the 1600s, and he famously said, we live at the bottom of an ocean of air. Here you have a picture of his barometer as the atmospheric pressure from the gas pushes down, the liquid inside the barometer is pushed up. So if we have high pressure, the liquid inside the tube will go very much higher than the surface level. If the pressure is low, it will come back closer to where the level of the outside pressure is. Now, if you have traveled anywhere outside of Texas, particularly gone skiing or somewhere where there's mountains, you already understand how the atmosphere will feel different at higher altitudes. The higher the altitude, the lower the atmospheric pressure because there's less of the atmosphere on top of you. Uh, in Galveston, Texas, we're at sea level, and at sea level, we are at 14.7 psi, like we said earlier. That's our kind of our baseline. Now, at Denver, you're a mile high, or 5,280 feet, the pressure is only 12.2 psi. Pikes Peak, Colorado, much higher elevation. The pressure is only 8.8 .8 psi. And then at the top of Mount Everest, 29,000 feet, 
pressure is only 4.9. There is not a lot of atmosphere at the top of Mount Everest. That's why people that hike there need oxygen tanks, because there's not enough oxygen in the air to actually survive. Now, we have several different pressure units and conversions. Pressure units can look a bit strange, so you have to keep in mind that all of these things right here, these are all different types of pressure units. The most commonly used are PSI and atmosphere, but you also have inches of mercury, millimeters of mercury, Tor, which was named after Torricelli, and Pascal and kilopascal. Now, you will have to be able to convert from one pressure unit to another. So we're going to give you some examples of this. The first one is 0 0.50 atmospheres, and we need to convert that to kilopascals. So first, we write down what we're given. Then we look up on our equality line up here, atmospheres and kilopascal. Everything on that line is equal, so we can use both of those to set up our conversion. One atmosphere on the bottom, so that it will cross out with our starting given information, and then 101.3 kilopascals. When we do the math, we get 51 kilopascals. Okay, our next example, we're starting with 744 tor. We need to convert that to millimeters of mercury. So we start with 744 tor. We get our two equalities up on the top. 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as 760 tor. And when we do the math, we get 744 millimeters of mercury. Now for the next one, number three, we're converting from PSI to atmosphere. So we start with 17.9 PSI and we look up at the top, we have 14.7 PSI is equal to one atmosphere. When we do the math on this one, we get 1.23 atmospheres. Okay, our last example, we have 155 kilopascals and we want to convert that to PSI. So we start with 155 kilopascals and our conversion will be 101.3 kilopascals is equal to 14.7. Now our kilopascals will cancel out and we will be left with 22.5 PSI. All right, now Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's Law states that at constant volume and temperature, the total gas pressure and a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of all of the partial pressures. All right, now for an example, let's assume you're breathing air that only has nitrogen and oxygen in it. At 1.00 atmospheres of total pressure, which means we're at sea level, the nitrogen has a partial pressure of 0.79 atmospheres. We can figure out how much the partial pressure of oxygen is. First we start with our formula. P total is P of nitrogen plus P of oxygen. And then we substitute in what we know. If the total pressure is one atmosphere and the pressure of the nitrogen is 0.79, then the pressure of the oxygen must be 0.21. All right, now for pressure and temperature, we're going to talk about the relationships between these two things. On these, we assume that the volume of the container is constant, so the only things we can manipulate are the pressure and the temperature. If we increase the temperature, our pressure is going to increase. Now, the higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy the particles get, and they will hit the walls harder and more often. So this will create greater force, and so greater pressure. As the temperature decreases, the pressure would also decrease. Now, this is a direct relationship, which means, all right, this is horrible, okay. 
All right, now we need to talk about the relationships between pressure and temperature. If we assume that the volume of our container is constant, meaning it can't be changed and that the only thing we can change is pressure or temperature, we will notice that as temperature increases, pressure will also increase. The higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy the particles have so they can hit the walls harder and more often, which will create more force. If we decrease the temperature, the pressure will also decrease. Now, this makes this a direct relationship. If we have a container at room temperature and we heat the gas, the particles will become much more active, move around with much more kinetic energy, and therefore the pressure will become much higher. So the key to remember here is, if temperature increases, pressure increases. All right, our next relationship is volume and temperature. This time we're going to assume that the pressure of the container is constant and can't be changed. Now, if we increase temperature, the volume will also increase. The higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy the particles get, and their increased motion will actually cause the container to expand. If we decrease the temperature, the volume would also decrease. For example, if we have a balloon at room temperature and we heat it up, the balloon's volume will increase because the air inside is moving faster and with greater force, it will try to expand and because the container will allow it to expand, the volume will increase. This is also a direct relationship. So key point to remember for this one, if temperature increases, volume also increases. Okay, our last relationship is pressure and volume. If we assume that the temperature of the container is constant, meaning we cannot change anything but pressure and volume, if we increase the volume, we will decrease the pressure. This is because a greater volume results in less crowded particles. They have a lot more space to move around, so the pressure drops. If we decrease the volume, the pressure would actually increase. And for our diagram here, we have a plunger that we can push down on our gas particles. They will run out of room and the pressure will increase because of it. Now, this is the only one that is an example of an inverse relationship. Key point to remember here, if I increase pressure, I will get a decrease in volume. All right, the last thing we need to talk about today is temperature conversions. In the Gauss Law calculations that you will learn, the temperature must always be in something called Kelvin. This is because the Kelvin scale is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Zero Kelvin represents absolute zero, meaning there's no motion at all. Now, we will provide you with these two formulas. Kelvin equals your temperature in Celsius plus 273, or your temperature in Celsius is Kelvin minus 273. So for our first practice problem, we're going to convert 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So I need to add 273 degrees to this one to get 298 Kelvin. Working backwards, if I need to convert 300 Kelvin to Celsius, I would subtract 273. 